Lopez. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching. From wherever you guys are at, in your kitchen, your living room, in the shower, and whatever place that you may be listening to this voice right here. I'm super, super excited to have you guys here today. This is going to be our Valentine's Love. Also, a little birthday episode for our special guest, who happens to be my little brother, Hi. Johnny. He was on season one, you guys. If you do not remember, we got him back for season two. And today is going to be all about him because his birthday just passed, right? Well, yeah. technically, in real t right now, today, well, no. Tomorrow today is, is my February birthday. 10th, but his birthday is February 11th, but this is coming out February 13th. Yes. <laughs> so we are doing a birthday episode and a little Valentine's Day thing. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about things, exciting things that is happening in Johnny's life that's going on. That makes me a very proud sister because it's been a long time coming. And how old are you turning? 22, 23? I'm turning 23. <laughs> it's my Jordan year. So how far, how many weeks? I mean, weeks. What, how many years are we apart? I'm 26. You're four, four years, huh? Three, four. Three to four years. Yeah, because when I turn 27, yeah, it's, I, four, it's years. four years. And then when I when you turn 24. <gasps> Johnny, okay. Well, in honor of his birthday, I ordered his favorite salad. Yeah. So we're going to have our favorite salad together. It's going to be very Kim K, Chloe moment. <laughs> If you guys are watching, I think when know. I was I think when I was 15, 16 is when we started having the salad all the time. You guys, the hype is real. Okay. She put me on. And I, I still, put him on. Yes. I still eat the salad to this day, and I'll have it like three, to two to three times a week if I'm feeling like a little bloated, and it'll just like flatten me. Because it's really good. No. Okay. For those of you guys that are listening and not watching the video, we have health nut salads, which is notoriously known for being the Kardashian salad. And they, they got bought out, no? By by Chris Jenner. No, Chris Jenner became a partner. Mm. Okay, so Johnny, wait. Let, let's let's do a mix. I'm gonna do a little ASMR. Grab a cucumber. I already mixed mine, but okay. I'm gonna grab a cucumber. Grab a cucumber, and then we're gonna do a little ASMR for the ones that are listening. Where is it hiding? Oh, ready? Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> We're so dumb. Anyways, okay. Johnny's turning 23 this year, and I feel like he just made one of the biggest life steps he's had. I feel like it's big because it's just it is a huge thing. It's a lot of responsibility. Please share with what's going on in your life right now. So this last Thursday, which was a really good Thursday, full of great news. But among that great news, um. I got approved for my first apartment, so it's a big, big step, and I'm really nervous, but also at the same time very excited. I'm, a I'm actually very, very happy where I'm going to be living because everything's going to be like walking distance from me. I'm probably going to save a lot on gas. And, you are. Um, and yeah, it's been really emotional. I've cried a lot because um, I, had, I had no problem staying with my sister because we we're very emotionally dependent on one another me and, me yeah. and cheekies mm -hmm. um but i think um i feel like i feel like as soon as i move out she's gonna get pregnant like you she, think so yeah like i feel like it's gonna like be a catalyst for her to like okay he's good he's out on his own i, I did my job now i can it's gonna be like a subconscious thing with her like where she's gonna be able to start her own family so but that makes me okay First of all, I told you, I'm like, we're really excited for you, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of responsibility, and I know that you could do it. I don't know how she's going to handle it. I know, but I was saying, I feel like, I really feel like we're going to be, like, spending a lot more time together, actually. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't, we live together and we see each other every day, but it's it's very little chances that we get to spend quality time with each other, like go eat or go to the movies, just do regular stuff. So I'm well, that's what, ki that's what kind of happened with me and her. Oh, Remember me and her would argue a lot. Yeah. And then we would argue like a good amount, but that's because I wanted a sister and not a mom. Mm -hmm. Like at that time. So when I moved out the first time, like she, it was hell. She <laughs> cried, remember? Yeah. She'll never she'll always throw it in my face. I always remember the day where I saw you haul come up 
and I couldn't believe that you were leaving me, et cetera, et cetera. But it, it helps the relationship so much because you, you're not in each other's space as much. Yeah. And it's not that like it's a bother or whatever, but it's like you have your own space to do your own thing. Yeah. Like, and she's always clarified that to me that I'm not a bother or anything. And we have really good communicate communication when it comes to that. But, um, I, I do want to make sure her and Emilio have their own space. And I think, um, you know, I, I, I think I've learned a lot to budget myself and, um, adult in the last two to three years of my life. But, I think um, having your own space definitely is like a catalyst to like, I don't know, just like you're not always going to be like safe. Like now it's depending on you, not anyone else. Yeah, because moving in is a big deal. Yeah, I'm not ready for that, though. Ugh. Uh, okay, are you moving in by yourself? <laughs> no, I'm not. No? No. All right. We're not going to talk too much into it, but this is another big step. Because you guys are meshing your lives together. Yeah, so... How are you feeling about that? <sighs> not necessarily. I'm not really scared about that. I have a lot of peace mm -hmm. with the person I'm with. It's just... um, I, um, I'm really more nervous just for... You know, if I'm going to be able to pay bills on time and... You know, all those responsibilities more than anything. But as far as, like, sharing my space with someone else... Mm, I'm not really nervous about that. Yeah. yeah, I have a lot of peace. That's good. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a whole nother stepping stone for something greater in your life. Aside from mom's projects, this is going to help you grow in a different way. Like maybe start something for yourself. Yeah. Or like do something new. And I feel like a lot of people have that judgment. And I, I don't want to say like this is going to prove people wrong. Mm -hmm. But I cannot wait for like this episode to come out and be like, oh, wow, Johnny's actually... I feel like they, they look at you and, like, just see you as a kid. Yeah. And I don't like that because y you are grown and you make life choices. Obviously, there you know, there's little things, but it's, like, you are grown and, like, people don't understand certain parts of you. They, they, they think you're really dumb, but you're really, 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 really smart. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I feel like this is going to shift things for you and in your relationship. Can we talk about your relationship or you're, you I don't want to talk about your relationship. I want to talk about you. Can we talk about the bisexuality? Yeah. Are you comfortable talking about yeah. that? Because when you first came out, people were kind of, I think, not, I don't want to say confused, but I want people to be able to understand it. And I, because I know you and I love you as my brother, mm -hmm. I understand you as well. But I feel like, you know, like people have this weird thing. How, like, yeah. where, where do you feel like you lie between that? So I, I think a lot of like confusion happened when I when I was in my first relationship uh, because um, it was a, a lot of people don't realize that it was actually pressure from the reality show. Um, they didn't want to say the word bisexuality because they were convinced, oh, the Latin community doesn't understand that. So they wanted me to just straight up say, oh, are you straight or gay? Mm. But the thing is, like, I was still kind of figuring myself out. And that, I don't say I don't want to say like i necessarily regret coming out i just regret kind of like the way it happened um mm. because i feel like it could have been handled a lot better and also i i mean where i'm at now i mean it's a different time also um that was six seven eight years ago but i mean i could have helped someone out but also like if 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 i was dealing with it now then i probably wouldn't feel like the need to like make a big deal about it you know uh, what i mean yeah but either way i'm glad like i I, s I said what I said because um, I don't feel like anyone can use that to hurt me, you know? Mm hmm How do you feel like you came to terms with it, though? I feel like you're not even bi. I feel like it's more asexual. Is it asexual? Um, someone told me I was sapiosexual. What that I'm, I'm, I'm connected to people's minds, that I get attracted by people's, people with their Asexual is the soul? No, asexual is when you're not necessarily attracted to people sexually, I believe. Mm. And sapiosexual, I think it's that's the word. It's like you're, you're just... By their minds? Yeah. So I've I've noticed that um, when I when I've like just gotten close to people, whether it be a boy or a girl, I just I if there's a mental connection there, then I start feeling things. Mm. Yeah. And then there's like pans and. Yeah, pansexual. I mean, someone someone told me that actually one time too. Um, but what I know is I'm I'm able to do both girls and boys. So I'm just like you know what bisexuality is what it is but even then i kind of like i i, I kind of think of like the labels as like man-made 
Mm -hmm. Like I just, uh, cause I, I remember when I was, before I even knew what the concept of being straight, gay or bi was when I was a little boy, I was already having like crushes on both boys and girls in kindergarten. So that was before like the world got its hands on me basically. Right. Did you, okay. So now in the perspective of like, obviously who mom was, cause when I came out that I was in a relationship, I was scared. Mm-hmm. And that was just because I was in a relationship. I'm like, I mean, I've told you as well. Like, I don't, I see myself straight and I've had that experience. And that's why I'm saying like, that was more of an emotional and you were there mm-hmm. more emotional attachment. But as far as like actually saying it, like, were you ever scared? Um, not necessarily. I was just, um, I was just kind of like, I didn't necessarily want to hear like the comments about like what mom would think because at the end, at the end of the day, my mom isn't here. And, um, and I, and I wouldn't be able to, to know how she would feel, but either way, like, I think a big part of, um, of growing up is like, you can't always go by what your parents say. You have, you can honor them and everything, but you have to make your own identity. And, um, I do think, um, I do think I, feel, I really feel like I would have been the one to like shift my mom's mind. Right. Just because I had a I had a major soft spot in her heart. And I don't want to like, like, obviously, I think my mom, mom supported the community. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just not what exactly she wanted for her children. I think also it's just because um, she saw the lives that were led by by people around her. Mm-hmm. And I, that was all she had in her mind. Mm-hmm. So. And especially because, like, in, like Hispanic Latino culture, being Mexican, it's very like. Also, just because, like, I I also feel like she was afraid of um, what people in her family might think, mm-hmm. um, because you know we we have other people in our family um, that have come out and they were rejected, they were rejected very harshly, and my mom was here to witness that. Traumatic so, I, experiences. so I think she was. She was scared of her kids getting rejected. And I want to touch base back on like what, how people say like, oh, your mom wouldn't want this. Your mom wouldn't want that. There's a lot of things that my mom wouldn't have wanted. Right. But it's also, I can't, it's been what? It's going to be 12 years, 12 years this year, yeah. 12 years this year. Like I cannot, me personally cannot keep living and acting as if that she was here. Like, obviously she's like, she can be here in the room in the space and, her energy, her soul, whatever, her spirit. But it's like, as if she's here, like being my mom, like it, 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 it just can't happen. Yeah. If physically and emotionally, I can't do that to myself because then I feel like it'd kind of be kind of going crazy. Yeah. Like, I, I, I get that. Like I, being like a, I don't know. I feel like I was living my life like that a lot for the first couple of years after she left. And it just isn't a great place to be in uh, mentally. You know, you want to do your you want you to do your best to honor your parents and everything, but it's just, it takes a toll on your life mentally. It does. And yeah, I go what you mean by that. It's just like, and it's, it's like, um, I don't want to say, a, I don't want to say burden. It's just like a weight of like, always having to think like, oh, what would my mom think? Or what would my mom say? Or what would my mom do? But it's like physically she is not here anymore. So I kind of li- I, I would live my life on my own terms. And it brings so much more peace and like more freeing like that. And it's also like staying in that place can unintentionally cause like resentment. Yeah. Because you'll start thinking like, well, like I'm trying to do right by my mom. But wasn't it her responsibility to be here and tell me this herself like that? So it's just a very conflicting thing. And it's like you get you start getting angry for no reason. Yeah. And it's like, again, it builds resentment and you just and then the resentment turns into bitterness and your bitterness kills you inside. And it's just like, for what? You built this whole story. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people maybe not maybe won't get this unless like, you know, you've been in similar situations. It's very hard to find people with shared life experience like ourselves. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's it's. It's real life shit, guys. It's real life shit. And um, I think we've handled it the best we could uh, while at the same time, you know, trying to maintain our love towards our mom. And, you know, I know my mom did everything she could for us. She and she had our our best intentions at heart mm-hmm. at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Well, who's said? OK, we're going to go on a quick break and we'll be right back. Eat some of our salad. 
and we're gonna get more into stuff with johnny i'll be back welcome back you guys okay johnny so let's get the la- i had been wanting to film this episode a long time ago but we wanted to film it when mom's album came out right mm-hmm. which is the first album after after her leaving after her leaving this is her first and after our takeover yeah this is her first original album of like new material uh since Juez Prestadas in 2011 so so I want to make it very clear and very put the facts out there. These songs existed, but when they were given to us, it was kind of a puzzle mm-hmm. that was just everywhere. So, And then Johnny spent how many days? About two to three nights. Two to three nights placing the pieces together because it was kind of just everywhere. Voices, sounds, music, everything was everywhere. It wasn't like that. Yeah. So what happened was when when we got control and they gave us the hard drives, we asked for the songs um, like, you know, the vocals and everything. And they said, no, um, you can find it. You can do the work. So that's what Johnny did. Johnny found everything, put it together. This project is his baby. Like Mision Cumplida is his baby. It's like his little... And everybody knows Johnny is my mother's encyclopedia. He knows everything about her. He knows everything about when, what time, everywhere. So this was like his moment of like really hard work. And obviously we've told you privately and publicly as well. Like I wouldn't have been able to do it. And if you weren't here, it probably wouldn't have gotten done. Yeah. So thank you for that. But talk about it. Talk about how that process was for you. All that good stuff. So... The album was, I had a vision for it for a very long time. The first time I ever heard uh, four of the songs were when I was on my 16th birthday, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, I I had a vision for the cover since 2020. And I, I don't know, I, uh, the the album's original name was actually supposed to be Hablando Claro Mm -hmm. uh, because of the name on the album. So there is a song on the album um, that she dedicated to her mom. And my mom has this theme across her her discography of honoring her mom. Songs like Homenaje a mi madre, Resulta, La Gran Señora. And that that same theme continues here. And I also thought Hablando Claro um, had a lot of meaning to it because there's been so much said about her ever since she left. Yeah. And it's like her it's like her final her final words in her own words. So um, songs like Quisiera entrar en mi lugar, um, Aparentemente Bien, even... Um, I feel like she held on to songs like Engañémoslo because they were too real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I even say now, like, I, <laughs> I, that song hits way harder knowing my mom actually felt it in her soul. So <laughs> I, um, I, I'm very, very proud of it because I ju- it feels like a Jenny album from top to bottom. Like, it has every part of her, every side of her. Yeah. And the arreglos are, are awesome. I know she would be really, really happy with them. Um, and uh, a lot of people probably don't know this, but my mom had two options that night. Uh, actually, a couple, but one of them was to go see Banda MS oh after... Yeah, that's my favorite fact. Yeah, after after she performed in Monterrey on December 9th, um, my mom had the option to go see Banda MS and sing a song with them, and they had a table ready for her, um, but my mom decided to go to the airport instead, and, um, and uh, now they're the ones that were able to produce this album from top to bottom, so... Mm-hmm. It's pretty awesome that that was able to happen for them. Um, and I think she'll be really, really happy with it. It has that classic Mazatlan banda, banda sound. I feel like there's like little life situations that she still lets happen or like lets us know that she's still here and that like like it's an OK. Yeah. Like confirmations like that was like huge confirmation or like just felt it felt good. It felt very peaceful. And then. One thing that happened here at the house, okay, so I had been looking, I don't know if I told you, but I've been looking for quotes for the backyard Mm -hmm. to get pools and all this stuff, right? For the landscaping. I got a bunch of quotes, X amount of money, right? Like, let's say it it ranged from 100,000 to 400,000, right? To do a pool and all that stuff. So I'm like, okay, like I was looking, I was like, okay, cool, like whatever. One person comes, he gave me a quote, it was like, 180 170 something like that 
cool. I let it. I let the 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 estimates go. I was like, okay, let me think about it. Let me see if I really want to do this right now. Um, I get a call, and I was in TJ, and one of his employees called me, and he's like, hey, um, the owner wants to go ahead and move forward with you. He's like, but all you have to pay is for material. Oh, he's wow. like, all you have to do is pay for material. I'm like, okay, so what's the catch? Like. Is this like a social media promotion, like trade, like let me know, like whatever. So I put him in contact with um, with my manager and I was like, talk to him and we'll see how I, you know, figure it out because I didn't want to give him my number. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. Talks to him and he's like, okay, so do, do you want to trade for a promotion? Is this what you want to do? And then he's like, he's like, no. He's like, I generally just want, he's like, when I saw her, the day that we did the the estimate, to when he came to the house, he's like, the day that I saw her, I remembered, I went back in my emails, and I just felt something. He's like, I felt some type of peace or something, like I have to owe something to her. And I remembered that two weeks before Jenny passed away, he was supposed to do the project of the backyard. No way, of really. the house. That's so crazy. That's freaking and crazy. And then I'm like, there's no way. He's like, yeah, he's like, I have never told emails. me that. I know. So he's like, go ahead. You can, he's like, I I generally, he's like, I feel like I owe it to her and I owe it to you because that was an unfinished project. That's so crazy. (laughs) Right? So those are like moments that I feel like, like, that I felt like that was a gift from mom to me. Yeah. And then like the album thing, like this, the pieces, this makes me feel like, like peaceful. Yeah. Like even like little things like. You know, like I said, the original name of the album was supposed to be Hablando, was supposed to be Hablando Claro, but then um, I found Misión Cumplida, uh, which was a song that was originally written when she was uh, producing her artist named Monica Padilla, mm-hmm. and um, I thought that 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 title fit it way better. It, it did. It fit so many so many things, um, and especially with everything going on now. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of little things like that, things that you know. There's so many things like that that have happened that I can't even think of off the top of my head right now, but it's just been nonstop moments like that for the last three, four years. Right? Like, yeah. these last, like, I feel like last year in, well, 2023, 2022, and now 2024, I feel like there are moments where it's, like, like sporadic. Like, something's yeah. changing. Like, there's a shift. So something something that actually just happened is um, we're working on the next vinyl uh, for, my mom's, uh-huh. for my mom's discography. Um, and... I was trying to look for the layout um, when back then when CDs were being made, you would get like a layout of the artwork and stuff. And um, and I thought we were going to maybe have to ask uh, her previous label for that. And they have they were just asking me again. Hey, Johnny, can we get this artwork? Because we want to make sure we keep the artwork as close to it as she left it. We don't want to add anything or change anything, including the acknowledgments. Um, that being said, they were asking me and I was looking through this box at the office and then lo and behold i find a folder with the actual layout like her layout mm. herself and it was like five ten minutes before that they were just asking me i was like wow yeah there's like little coincidences that happen and even like in our personal lives like with the kids and little things that make us feel like okay yeah like she's still here and it's been like tw- it's gonna be 12 years this year this is crazy and dad has been what 15 dad's gonna be 16 this year that's crazy i lose right I, 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 i've lost count with that yeah I lo- the only reason, no, 15. You want to know why I know? Because Jayla was born the same year he passed away. That's true. So I always connect true. the two. That's and true. Luna, too. Luna was born the same year mom passed away. That's so crazy. And Luna's going to be 12. But, like, there's just little coincidences, like, you know. I, I, okay, qu- for real question. Do you feel like your memories with dad have faded more than mom? Um. Yes, but they've slowly started coming back more, actually. Really? They faded. They faded a lot more after mom passed. But the more conversations I start having, like, with people that knew dad, like, that's how I know I'm like, oh, my memories are in my brain. I just have to, like, unlock them. They're blocked by trauma and stuff. Mm. So I I get what you mean by that. But, like, as I've dived in to, like, try and get to know him more, mm-hmm. um, they've started coming back. So I feel like mine fade faster. And even with mom, like, moms, like, now they're starting to, like, like, up f- before I was 15, I can't remember a lot. You know, you know, those, um, those, uh, like when you get like, you know, the videos I say in the sibling group chat, like when she was in the car, 
Mm. And she was at Children's Hospital. Like when I see that kind of stuff, like yes. it kind of like brings it all yeah. back right away. Like mm-hmm. it unlocks a whole bunch. For There's me. like little things. Yeah. Like like bring it back. Okay, so now that you were working like in the project for Moms, the CD, more closely like musically, mm-hmm. do you see how? Did it change your perspective on music? Yeah. Well, a lot of my perspective being changed on music had to do with me going to school um mm-hmm. and learning a lot about music theory and all that kind of stuff and also being in the band with i my feel sister. like a lot of people don't know that that you went to school for for music yeah well i i kind of never fe- felt the need to like be loud about it either yeah but, but yeah i totally forgot that you did he did go to school for music yeah and whatever but uh-huh yeah so um going to school for music really helped me a lot and then also being in the band with my sister um i've always been told you know there's no better experience than you know actual experience yeah so um i i've just been learning a lot about music in the last four to five years of my life and um being able to work on the project with my mom and also working on my own music has just taught me a lot and um it's made me more picky it's made me way more picky with music as well Mm, okay so now how do you see music for your your own because johnny writes and he has like songs to release but he Mm. does it yeah i've been working on my own on my own EP for the last um, for the last two years almost. So, I uh, I can't say I write songs yet because um, there's ver- things that inspire you. Yeah. So I I get it's very hard for me to write um something to a melody. Mm-hmm. But um, what I do really well is I co-write and I can write poems and I like sending those to my composers and then mm-hmm. they they create a mix. Mm-hmm. So um, I've I've done that a couple times now and I really loved what's come out of it. And um, you guys are probably going to be able to hear some of that. So how soon? Um, I like the one with your friends. Yeah. The flat <laughs> one by one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they're all they're they're all on it, but that's the so it's gonna. Um, I'm working on a five song EP right now, Ooh. and it's called Cinco por Cinco, and. Um, Ooh. Okay. <laughs> the um, it's the first preview of it is probably going to come out on the 5th of april um which will be five years to the day of me launching my first single so um so it's like five 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 all the way yeah everywhere so i'm really oh really gosh. excited it's gonna be there it's gonna be like um my intention has always been to like use regional instruments musica mm-hmm. mexicana but like in a different way um so i'm very much experimenting with with the music this time and creating a fusion and i don't want it to feel forced i and i feel like the music i'm making now reflects my personality more than ever like like it's shifted over yeah years. like it's the first music i can listen to myself and i enjoy i feel and i feel like a lot of people don't know this about you either that you're just very musically inclined in general like you pay attention to little little like details here and there and it, like i listen like i feel like you're that that kanye thing what is it called the, uh, the synesthesia or? no the little thing that he came out with the boom oh the um fuck what's it called the uh, the stem player the stem player i feel like you are the stem player and like when you like because you loved it and it's like you pay the one little thing makes a huge difference it's taken a long time to build that skill though because like yeah. when when i was like 15 16 in vocal class they would like always like do you hear the bass do you hear the drums like do you hear all you're like no (laughs) it's very hard to like differentiate those things but now i i do it with ease thank god but it's taken a long time to get to that point so anyone out there that's like you know musically inclined or anything and you're having trouble with that just you know keep at it because it'll Mm -hmm. it'll it'll come and i feel like we all have a little something though like yeah obviously the three girls sing right but you and mikey listen to the music and like pay attention to the sounds and the words and Jackie's song writes and she writes poems too. And then, you know, yeah. like we all have a little something that wasn't intentional. Yeah. I, like it's not, and all... mom never forced it either. Like mom obviously told it, like made us play the piano and the guitar and all that mm. stuff. But it's also like, I don't do that now. Yeah. It's all, we're all just like very naturally musically inclined and we all just love great music. I think mm-hmm. like different types, like yeah. you love a lot of things. You yeah. love a lot of genres, and that's what I'm saying. You and Mikey. I can literally say the only thing I probably don't like is heavy metal. That's the only thing. And Mikey loves heavy metal, I think. Have you heard him listen to heavy metal? No. He gets aggressive. I don't like it. I like everything but country. 
Really? And heavy metal. I know. Mom would always play country. I like Gretchen Wilson, but that's how f- that's the farthest <sighs> I'm getting. That's like that's it. Oh my gosh, she would sue you. No, she w- wait what? She would sue you because you don't like country music. She, my mother would sue me. Yes, <laughs> you know she was a country music head. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> her iPod is full of country music, guys. Okay, I feel like I would have put her on, like reggaeton, heavy reggaeton. I think so too. I really think she would have. I think I actually could see her vibing to Bad Bunny more than I could see her vibing to Peso Pluma. Really? Yeah. I think it would be harder for her to adapt to that kind of sound. I could see her vibing way more to Bad Bunny. But like Bad Bunny, like as a joke, you know how mom would like joke around yeah, about like it? Yeah, like that. But then eventually she would like, I don't know, it would get stuck in her head and it would just become like a part of her. Okay. What about, what else do you think? um like new age like these days like it's peso pluma it's bad bunny huh. i wonder who else she would have really loved it's because re- it's very different yeah my mom was very picky guys very, very my mom picky. like my mom was the woman um my mom was the woman that did not like halo by beyonce because she didn't like the way her voice sounded <laughs> sorry i don't think she would like the new beyonce really i don't think she would either actually no Mmm. I can't think of. I just feel like it would be so hard to please her. <laughs> yeah, my mom was very picky musically, guys. Very. But anyways, well, well, I'm excited. So you said April 5th. Yeah. The day before Jordan's birthday. Yeah, I'm trying to get everything in line and it's looking like it'll happen. So I'm really, really excited. Are you nervous? <sighs> I feel I've been anxious to share a lot and I've really I haven't shared anything at all. Like you haven't. on on tiktok nothing like that so i've been really holding on to it and you know it's it's experimental so it's probably not going to be for everyone but more than anything i'm i'm happy with what i'm making and that's I, that's something i like i'm really happy with around this time around because when i launched my first single i think i got i was surprised with the amount of love i got but i genuinely wasn't like happy myself mm. like i didn't like the way my voice sounded on the track i didn't like the music on it do you it, feel like you pushed it out like too soon uh, a little bit, yeah. yeah. And also, I was just way more inexperienced. And mm-hmm. I didn't know a lot of of what I know now. And I, you know, I know, I know how to fix a track now. You know, I know what'll what'll make me start loving it. Aww. He's growing up, you guys. It's really hard. Like, I don't want to say it's hard to be lovey dovey, but we've kind of grown up very. Uh, things happen back to back for us. Like our like uh, you know with mom and dad and it was kind of always like I don't want to say rough relationship but we've always kind of been not rocky I don't want to say rocky either but we've like it's hard like both of our personalities if you, have, if, you if you have two if you have a sibling that you're like two three years apart from you probably like understand yeah like Genevieve and Jordan oh yeah like you remember when <laughs> when you're picking them up from school yes uh, but they were defending each other but they were both mad at each other yeah so they were getting into a fight with each other yes, yeah tell, tell the story tell the story the <laughs> they were so i picked up the kids from school one day and jordan jordan likes to mess with genevieve and she likes to mess with and him. she likes to mess with him but it's genevieve genevieve was my goddaughter and jordan is his godson <laughs> so it actually works out perfectly but genevieve genevieve is like the leader She's me. She leads. She's the leader. She told him, like, hey, Nina's going to come pick us up. Stay with me. So that way we can, she can find us easier. Jordan's like, no, I'm going to go hang out with my friends. Okay, cool. He goes, hangs out with his friends. And she's like, Jordan, make sure you come back. She's going to be here soon. And then Jordan's like, so Jordan's friends mock him. He's like, oh, Jordan. Jordan got in trouble. (laughs) And then... (laughs) And then Genevieve, I think it was Genevieve. Genevieve said, Genevieve said, no, Jordan's like, oh, I know. I, I didn't get in trouble. And Jordan, Genevieve said, well, I feel bad for your mom. No, Jordan said, well, I feel bad for your mom. And the kid is like, why? And Genevieve said, because she made a mistake. <laughs> so in the middle of them arguing, they, they defended both defended each other. Each other. <laughs> so I feel like that's mine and Johnny's relationship. Like we argue, but we love each other so much. Like no matter that's, what. That's sibling math. That sibling math is that you can you can beef with each other, but if someone is beefing with your sibling, yeah, you it just you know, it's bumpy. But I've always I've always loved him, and like, 
you know, we've we've went through certain situations together where I can't experience that with my other siblings. And I'm grateful that it's with you and that, you know, we learn from each other. You teach me a lot of things. And we're the sun and the moon, guys. She's yes. a Libra sun and I'm a Libra moon. So somehow we correlate and the math makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> math, math. <laughs> OK, we're going to go on break and we'll be right back. All right, you guys, welcome back. So today is actually Johnny's birthday party. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating. He has also been fasting. Yeah. Can I you explain why you fast? So and how long you've been fasting? So uh, for about three years now, I usually do this fast. Um, the 30 days leading up to my birthday, they're called your 30 karmic days. Mm -hmm. So I stop eating red meat. Um, I try to eat less chicken. Um, I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Um, do anything like that. And I also do my best to not wear black. Um, that's a part of it as well. I didn't notice that. Yeah. So it's it's a little thing. And you start feeling the difference. It's very, like, subtle. But, like, I don't know. Every every year I've done it, they're always like, huh, I like um, I like uh, what this wearing light colors is doing to you. And mm. everything. So it's just um, it's just to balance yourself. And I really believe that, you know, when you fast from stuff, that um, that God ends up rewarding you. And I really mm -hmm. feel like I've, I've been rewarded a lot from this fast. So it is. There's a lot like when you fast and you set it's surrender. Mm -hmm. Initially, it's just surrendering and it's kind of just letting God take control of whatever. Like if if we could fast the whole year. Yeah. So that'd this, be great. This last <laughs> this last Thursday, though, is when I started feeling like feeling the benefits more than anything. I got so much good news. And one day I got approved for my apartment. I got great news about something regarding my mom's music um, and, you know, the court we, date yeah, following. Yeah. The court date, you know, there was just so much great news and um, I'm like, all right, God is, God is listening to me. God is listening to me. And I also, I, I always try to do this regardless, but more than anything during these 30 days, I do my best to pray on my knees um, morning, day and, and night. And you're not drinking. Yeah. And you're not smoking. Yeah. Or doing anything else. So this is very whole, clean, like, aspect. So today, he's La getting fucked up. Yeah, last, but last time I was here, actually, guys, I was, like, in my stoner phase still. Like, I was, I was very much, like, waking and baking and stuff. So I was, I, I don't know if anyone could notice it, really. No. Because, like, I mean, my tolerance was so high that, like, you know, when, you're, when your tolerance is that high, you don't really, like, get affected, like, mm -hmm. uh, like you know, usual. But um, this is me sober, like completely sober. Yeah. And to, and I was telling him, I told him, like, do you want to drink today? Do you not want to drink? Do you want to wait? He's like, I'm going to save it for the party. So I know what today is going to be. Yeah. But I'm also, I'm having liver shots and I'm having a liquid IV on standby because my friends are crazy. And <laughs> I have a feeling they're going to want to get me really drunk today. Okay. So you're turning 23. Mm -hmm. What are you expecting or what are you hoping for this year? Mm, more than anything, besides launching my own music and... um proceeding with what we have for mom because i'm i think i'm more excited than ever for what we have going on but um i think more than anything is just independence mm -hmm. independence in a lot of different ways um mm -hmm. 23 2 plus 3 is 5 so i think that's another good thing that's um, a good sign big a big thing i'm focusing on this year is just independence and in all and all ways so i'm really excited I'm excited for you, too. I feel like this year's going to be just, like, a huge shift. And I feel like for all of us, like, for Janae, Jackie, like, things are really going to change. Yeah. Like, in a good way. Like, if uh, when I was doing my vision board this year, I swear I wrote, like, a prayer on the side. And I was like, I don't know why, but I just felt like, wow, God, like, I'm just going to, I want to thank you in advance because I know that you're really going to pull through. Yeah. And... Guys, Jayla's gonna turn fifteen this year. I know. We're gonna have her getting set. <laughs> and one of the main things that I put, I put a picture of us, all all of us. Mm -hmm. The five of us on my vision board. I probably shouldn't be saying that because of people, but I don't got that. But I put and I put a, a sign that said peace, right? Yeah. Uh, right over us. And this year all I really wanted was for is for our family just to have that peace. Because yeah. I feel like we've kind of been like like, there's peace within us, but I just want to be able to, like, yeah, be able to work. We have a lot of, like, just, 
I feel like it's a lot of external conflict. Yes. And it's robbing the peace. Yeah. So I really, I, that's why I was saying like this year, I really know that the, God's going to really pull through with peace for us. I think it's going to happen for sure. Too. Um, okay. So this is also our Valentine's day episode, mm -hmm. right? How are we feeling about love? Um, when it comes to love, I think I'm feeling better than ever. Yeah. Honestly, I have a lot of peace in that area of my life and um you know god willing i'll if if the time comes to share that i definitely will but i like um maintaining my privacy when it comes to love a lot because okay. i think i think when a lot of people see something happy they try to attack it yes. dan, dan that's what i want to say like i people don't get it like when it's like i or when I'm getting into a relationship mm -hmm. and I say, look, I would love to keep this private for as long as I can mm -hmm. because people can rob that peace and that happiness so quickly yeah. and change everything. I also think regardless that, um, you know, being with us, like there's always like, like, I don't know, someone is always attached to being with us, you know, in case something doesn't work out. So I think you know, with us or without us, that person just deserves to have a normal life. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it's kind of like, they, you would think that they would want this life. Yeah. Like the pick the cameras and all stuff. It's like, no, 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 no they're no, like, no, fuck no. all that. <laughs> Absolutely not. This is not, it's not for the weak and it's not easy. Um, but I'm happy that you're in love. Thank you. I know that. Well, we know things <laughs> about the love that certain situation but i am happy and you deserve all the happiness thank you and i've learned and i've grown and i feel like we both learn and grown together about you know respecting love. each other and boundaries and love and you know i'm happy and i i hope that without saying too much you know when the time is right when the time is right it'll happen <laughs> But you look healthy. I feel you healthy. Thank you. I don't feel you very um, stoner vibes. Yeah, and I I know this last um, this last round being like just you know completely off of weed convinced me. I'm like you know what I weed has helped me in a lot of aspects in a lot of different yeah. aspects, but also me too. I need my sober brain. Yeah, I need my sober brain because I'm just like sharp. I'm quick and. Um, but you used to think you were sharp and quick with weed too. Because I am still in some aspects. It's <laughs> yeah. just, it's just, it depends. It, I think any too much of anything is 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 bad for you. You sound like Janae. Yeah. You sound like yeah. Janae. <laughs> I was actually quoting Jay Z, but yeah, you sound like Janae. No, but she, you know what? She would always tell me that because there was a period of my life that I loved avocado. Like I would eat two avocados a day. That's a lot of polyunsaturated fat, monounsaturated. I fat. know. So she told me, Jenny. Too much of anything is bad for you. So that never leaves my my mind. Okay, what other things are you excited to share for this year? What are we expecting um, for Johnny? So besides my EP, um, I haven't shared this anywhere else, so you're actually getting the exclusive, but I'm oh. actually make it's going to be a visual EP, um, which means like I'm not making music videos for okay. each of the songs. I'm, okay. doing, I'm doing visuals for all the songs, but it's going to be one long short film. Like a 15, 20 minute short film. And it all like intertwines? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's very on brand for you. Yeah. Yes. Because of short films, anything, movie yeah, type thing. I think, I think I'm stimulating like my first dream there, which was to be a actor, director, all that stuff. And then, um, you know, music. And I, I really feel like it has to be this way. Otherwise, I'm not going to be happy with it. Like mm -hmm. it has to be like this way. And, you know, five songs is easy to make visuals for. So, yeah. I'm like, why not do it? And also, um, I just got confirmation. I won't say what yet, but Jayla will be participating in it. So there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. Share your socials. Share your socials. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as the great single as well as TikTok. There you go, you guys. Oh, do you want to talk about the blue page? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's do you it. Talk about it. Yeah. He has a boo page. He has an OF, you guys. Yeah, I just started it. And if y'all want to know what this looks like, <laughs> I don't. So go and do that. There's a link in the bio somewhere. Yeah, it's um, it's fun, honestly. 
I, I, I know you're like a little bit way more shy about it, but I'm like, honestly, I have no, I have no qualms about like showing off my body like that. Ooh, okay, don't talk about it. <laughs> I'm done talking about it. I yeah. don't want to. It makes me shy. And either way, like, you. <laughs> either way, like I've, I've thought about that too. Like if anything like comes out, like at least I know I'm like, well, I'm the one that put it out there. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That is true. It's way better for me because I feel like I've had that anxiety for like a lot of years about like, oh my gosh, I feel like I've done stuff where stuff like where stuff oh someone's like, bound to come out with something yeah I think. like pictures or anything like yeah. that. yeah i'm like you know what i'll just like, whatever it's gonna bring me a lot more peace so yeah, yeah like, let me beat you to it <laughs> <laughs> somebody actually told me that <laughs> when i announced it um somebody replied i love that you and jenica are doing this together well not together but you know what i mean <laughs> well there you guys go make sure you guys support him and you know <laughs> he's got a new apartment so we gotta <laughs> Just joking. No, but thank you guys so much for watching and listening to this episode. Thank you so much for coming, thank for taking. For oh, me. let's show our merch. Oh, we yeah. got our merch on. Yeah, this is at the store right now. And we have a few more designs launching this week, actually. There you guys go. And then this is a sweater that we've everyone loves. Yeah. That I have. That one sells a lot. It does. It's very comfy. I love zip ups. We need more of those. We do. But, all right, you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to this episode. Please make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And we will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye. Overcomfort Podcast is a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network.